mamy już drugi wykład pana profesora Wladimira Szlapety, który ostatnio mieliśmy przynajmniej o czeskim funkcjonalizmie wysłuchać fantastycznych opowieści. Dzisiaj czekamy z niecierpliwością na tą drugą część o twórczości Szlapetów, ojca Ludomira, który był, zresztą pan profesor nam to na pewno opowie, członkiem zespołu pracującego w pracowni Hansa Szaruna i wiele innych fantastycznych obiektów, nie tylko to. Czekamy. Zapraszam panie profesorze, wykład w języku angielskim. Szanowne panie i panowie, ja jeszcze raz bardzo dziękuję pani dziekan Magdalenie kozeń Wozniak za zaproszenie do Krakowa, dlatego ja się czuję w Krakowie bardzo dobrze, jako doma, gdyż ja w Warszawie się czuję jak za granicą, w Gdańsku też jak za granicą, ale w Krakowie to jest jak na Morawie, jak doma. Tak bardzo jeszcze raz dziękuję, a now I will switch to English. I had a, on Tuesday and official uh, lecture and today it will be more private one. When I, when I was a, a Fulbright scholar in New York, my, my mentor, Dean of Cooper Union, uh, Tony Widler, used to say, Vladimir, you should be as much as possible very private and you will succeed to do a lecture. So, Uh, be careful, I will be more, more private as last time because I will show you the work of this uh, family. Uh, uh, you can see my proud grandfather, my dziadek and my babcia uh, uh, with uh, bliźniaki, with my father and my uncle. It might be in spring 1909 in Mistek, uh, nearby of Ostrava. Uh, The childhood they spent in Mistek in a little bit artistic oriented uh, ambiente because uh, as you see my father performed uh, Prince in a, a theater in a kindergarten and then the first war, war started and coincidentally my dziadek was ordered to serve a short time in Krakow. So you can see here my father on the left, my aunt Kvieta and my uncle Chestmir in front of the military hospital. Uh, and coincidentally, they have seen first time aeroplane uh, in Nova Hutia military airport in the year 1915. So it was a big cultural and technological shock for them. Uh, They have uh, uh, painted a lot, so this is uh, what my fighter did when he was 14 year or 15 year old. So this uh, talent and his uh, concentration on an interest in architecture was obvious. So finally, uh, my grandfather decided to send both boys to Brno to technical high school and he also uh, bought for them abonnement of the journal Stavitel. It was just the time when Jan Kotera, the founder of Czech architecture, died uh, very young. He was only 52 and his students at the Prague Academy made a little exam uh, to design Kotera Memorial and it was published in the January issue of the journal Stavitel. My father has seen it, so he also designed Jan Kotera Memorial. He couldn't do it in perspective yet because he was so young, but he did, I think, quite interesting design for 15 years old boy. It's uh, quite interesting. Uh, and then during the studies, uh, was organized in Brno lecture series of famous uh, Uh, prominent architect of this era. The first one was Jacobus Oud, uh, second one Gropius, and then Corbusier, Ozanfan, and uh, at the end Adolf Loos. So 
these students have attended uh, uh, these lectures and a result was uh, uh, possible to see in some designs of my father when he was 16 years old. The, uh, the family house obviously impressed by Villa by Le Corbusier in Chaux de Fonds. And also uh, he followed uh, technological progress of uh, uh, vehicle designs of uh, that time. And during whole studies he did uh, projects. Some of these sketches he then sent it to Wroclaw. Uh, and uh, uh, on this base he was then accepted after the major exam to study at the academy with Hans Scharun and uh, Adolf Rading. At the end of these studies in, in Brno, the school has organized interesting excursion to Vielička, <laughs> 1927. Look, at that time there was only one lady in this class, sorry. Today uh, we have it in schools nearly in opposite way, uh, but Anyway, this is a reality. Interesting is that from this class, I think six boys became quite uh, uh, well-known architects in Moravia, in Prague, for instance. Uh, Joschka Scholz uh, was student of Josef Gochar, and also Lubomir Krozil was student of Josef Gochar. And here is my father and uh, my uncle visiting uh, Velička didn't knowing that uh, your dean is a very special inhabitant of the city of Vielička. Then uh, my father worked uh, for industry short time in uh, Ostrava region and then he moved to Prague and worked in the office of uh, Dr. Babushka who designed National Museum of Technology and many schools and he met there one Silesian guy, Mr. Herbert Sprotte, later quite uh, known architect in Hamburg. He uh, did a lot of housing estates in Hamburg just after the war and my father was thinking, hey, I would like to go to Corbusier or to Bauhaus and uh, Herbert told him, look, uh, Lubo, go to Wroclaw because there are so good professors uh, do it. And so my father sent it these sketches and he was uh, accepted. And then he moved in October 1928 uh, to, to Wroclaw, which was just preparing uh, a famous uh, Werkbund exposition. And uh, my father and later also my uncle who followed him, I think six weeks later, uh, to Wroclaw could uh, collaborate on Aha. Je to Jak se to zrobí? Tu. Aha, okay. Aha, tím červeným punktem. So, this was a Hans Scharun project for Wohnheim for boarding um, hotel and uh, tower apartment house uh, by Rading. And this is the first, uh, first exam in the school, uh, st steel skeleton house. And when Rading has seen it, he, he uh, immediately decided to engage my father in the office because there was a lot of work for this uh, Werkbund exposition and also for starting uh, project for Siemensstadt estate in Berlin. This is a, a portrait of Adolf Rading, the second uh, uh, teacher, very good architect, uh, also participants of Werkbund estate in Stuttgart. And uh, he at that time designed Villa Rabe in Zwenkau near Lipsia with the famous uh, uh, sculpture by Oskar Schlemmer who moved from, uh, from Bauhaus to Wroclaw Academy. And uh, my uncle worked mostly for Rading, so this is uh, made by my 
uncle these sketches, and this is the first uh, work of my father in Sharun's office, competition design for a model family house, 1928 in uh, November. And here are some other things which my father did in Sharun's office. Here he is sitting in already in Berlin office of Sharun, and this is a quite fantastic document, a permanent uh, aluminium card for S-Bahn in Berlin from May 1929. Uh, my father worked on Kaiserdamm apartment and many other projects like uh, uh, Palace of Justice in Moabit or uh, like a department store in Marburg in uh, now, nowadays in, in Poland. Uh, I think I have to go here. And here uh, is a Siemensstadt estate where uh, later Sharon lived in this block and he built these three houses as an entrance, as a gate to Siemensstadt. These three blocks have been designed by Gropius these are designed by Hugo Hering and then by Hungarian member of the Ring Group, Fred um, you know, Forbad, and some other projects from this time, 1928 to 1930. Uh, this is a school project, competition entry for German theater in winter semester 28-29 as an extension of the a uh, German house uh, in center of Brno, which was demolished in uh, 1945 and nothing, nothing was built. And then uh, in, in autumn 1930, uh, they decided to go to America by very beautiful uh, ocean liner Leviton, and they, uh, they started there. American experience uh, via Paris. They, uh, of course, visited uh, Eiffel Tower and Versailles, and then they have gone by train to Cherbourg, and from Cherbourg by this ocean liner to New York, where they spent five months. Everybody was warning them, uh, because at the time it was terrible crisis after the crash at the New York, uh, a stock exchange, but nobody could stop them. So they came to New York and they couldn't find work, but they visited a lot of prominent architects. Uh, finally, my father succeeded when he visited Norman Belgedes and he told him, here you have a block and you have two hours and make some sketches. These are the sketches and after that, uh, uh, Norman Belgedes uh, engaged my father for the competition design for the mass theater in Kharkov, where uh, also Gropius got one prize and Marcel Breuer got one prize and uh, Norman Belgedes got uh, 11th prize. And this interesting is that besides of my father was sitting one German young guy and it was Helmut Hendrich, uh, who after the war designed the famous uh, Thyssen House the symbol of the German economical miracle in the uh, 50s. Uh, and then at the end of the stay, they could also, uh, through the connection uh, via Richard Neutra, uh, they could work short time for Kisler, who was born in Chernovtsi, in, now in Ukraine, uh, uh, who was later famous designer of the Museum of Book in uh, Jerusalem. They worked uh, for him uh, without payment, I think, 10 days, and then they came home and they decided to start uh, freelance uh, activity as architects, uh, partly in Ostrava, where they had a lot of social connections, and partly in Prague, where my father tried to, to find a way, but it was difficult, interesting are these portraits by Bulgarian cartoonist uh, Alexander Dobrinov from that, uh, that time. And they started also to publish reports about Berlin and about America in leading architecture journals like 
in journal Stavba, for instance, about the Siemensstadt estate, and then also about the new school for social research designed by Joseph Urban, who was also uh, one Austrian from Vienna, like also Richard Neutra, whom they, uh, they met in New York, and also they, they have attended a lecture of Frank Lloyd Wright. So really, they, they met uh, the American elite, included uh, Philip Johnson and uh, Henry Russell Hitchcock. They tried to open the door to many uh, studios. And then I can show you first projects. First project was a villa for factory owner in their native city of Mistek. Uh, it was broadly published uh, in regional press, but not built, but then immediately started uh, building activity with small houses uh, or double houses, as you see here in Mistek and in Tsibor and then one, um, one minimal family house in Valaske Mezirici, and uh, uh, then a villa for a lawyer in Mistek, where first time appears such noun, Schlappeta window. Schlappeta window was, uh, uh, had three parts. The middle part was a little bit broader, and the both, uh, 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 both windows on the side have been uh, for uh, opening and the living room is like Palladian system, symmetrical with the middle music salon on one side, a sitting area and on the other side uh, the dining, dining room. And this uh, typology was used then uh, many times in various houses. Interesting was uh, the connection between both because my father tried to, to start uh, in Prague, which was very difficult. So mostly he, he worked for commissions uh, in northern uh, Moravia, and once uh, my uncle had a crash with the automobile of my grandfather. At that time, there was no email connection, so my uncle has made a, a drawing of the crashed uh, a car but everything was insurance and my uncle was not injured. Uh, and my father is working uh, in uh, market uh, in, in Prague. Uh, but then because in Prague uh, there, there, there was no hope for commissions, finally uh, in the spring 1934, my father moved to Ostrava and then started very intensive uh, building activity of bows and uh, very interesting logo of the bows. Always my uncle with glasses and my father without uh, glasses. And they built uh, a lot of houses with this uh, Schlappeta window, not only in living room, but also in the uh, kitchen and with a typical conservatory, totally uh, glassed, uh, uh, glassed winter garden, and again this uh, division between sitting area uh, and uh, dining area in a uh, living room. This is in Opava, in Silesia, and then one not executed project for a doctor villa, quite beautiful, not far from Polish border, not executed. But this villa was executed in Ostrava, and when Pavel Janák, famous professor in Prague, selected this villa for the big exposition in Prague, 1935, so uh, through this villa they became somehow represented in the elite of uh, Czech architecture, even when they have been at the time only 25 years Old. This is uh, the villa completely shown with a view on the volley of uh, the river Ostravica in the city of Ostrava, built as a steel skeleton. It was, it was during the crisis, the moment when the steel was cheaper 
as, uh, as BRICS. It was very short, short time. And then uh, a very beautiful small uh, house uh, in the village, uh, which had a big success, it, which was published then uh, on the cover of the journal Forum in Bratislava, which appealed uh, in Hungarian and German uh, language. And uh, a writer, uh, Bohumil Markalos, who was famous not only for his novels, but also because he translated uh, Adolf Loh's book in Slere, Gesprochen in Czech, and he introduced this villa to the journal Pestritiden, which was a leading a weekly illustrated magazine, and it brought a lot of commission for the uh, future. So they built then another weekend house for a lawyer in Rozhnov in Beskiden, uh, which is the uh, only one house where we have sketches of both brothers. This is a sketch of my uncle and first sketch of my father. The result was a little bit different, but uh, the symbol of twins you can see on facades with these two bullet windows in the staircase uh, area. And this, as you see, these uh, houses have been then published also in professional journals for builder, Stavebni Ratze, here the house in Klokochov, and then uh, the weekend house in, uh, in, uh, um, Valaske, in Rozhnov, in Beskid. And um, it culminated with the villa for Dr. Kreml, obviously impressed by Sharon's development to uh, Villa Schminke, built in Lucin in Moravia, uh, on the border to Poland nowadays. Uh, interesting is that the northern facade looks a little bit Corbusian, but the opened arm in the south is obviously influenced by um, their guru, Hans uh, Sharun. Uh, so this is the Faust facade, and again, my father is sitting here. He was just uh, 26 years old when the villa was uh, finished. Uh, interiors, and then the conservatory with one reflection on this famous sculpture of Oskar Schlemmer in Villa Rabe in Zwenkau near uh, uh, Lipsia. Uh, these houses then have been also published in uh, women uh, mode, fashion, fashion, fashion journals, EVA, or social magazine, monthly magazine, Salon, in the second half of 30s, and it brought again a lot of commissions like a villa for uh, physicians uh, in, in Opava, uh, with uh, ordination downstairs. Uh, he was an uh, uh, obstetrical uh, specialist, and then in upper floor flat uh, for the family with interesting vault uh, in the part of living room. I think this is the motif which was uh, uh, influenced by Corbusier beton villas near Paris in Medon, for instance, or also Charon's house, uh, Hermann Matern. He also used a little vault in the uh, living, uh, living room. Interior from the other side. And the uh, children room, kitchen, and staircase uh, vestibule of the villa. And then they build also some wooden houses. Of course, they have known Konrad Wachsmann book, uh, Das Holzhausbau, uh, 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 and they used a similar methodology when they built a weekend house in Ostravice in Beskin. Here are some other sketches for weekend houses uh, in mountains. Uh, so somehow transcription of the modern movement to wood as a new material. And then I think the whole activity culminated by the villa for lawyer Eduard 
Liska in Silesian part of Ostrava with a huge living room, totally glassed, 18 and a half meter uh, in two levels with a view on the river Ostravice and the uh, panorama of the industrial uh, city of Ostrava. I think here is another uh, uh, example of a strong influence of Sharon. Uh, my father spent in summer 1934, shortly before he designed this villa, uh, three months practicum in Hans Sharun office, and he was a draftsman for the villa bench in, in Spandau. So this is the villa in Spandau, designed 1934. This is uh, uh, a drawing by my father for this villa and this is their clients uh, in Ostrava and the house from the backside, very beautifully connected with the territory and with the, with the site, and with this generous uh, interior with a view on the city of Ostrava. The house was never published in Czech architectural magazine, but um, 19, 2006, I think, was proclaimed as a national monument, uh, so this is the same level as Villa Tugendhat uh, by Mies and Villa Miller by, uh, Ado uh, by Adolf Loos in, in Prague. Once again, the whole villa. And then one uh, example of co cooperation of my father with Sharun was a, a study of typology of one uh, collective house for physicians. The idea was that in the parter should be ordination for practical uh, physicians, and in next floor would be a living room of the doctor, and then bedroom area for doctor, and then staircase to the last floor where would be patient's room. But chamber of physicians has not allowed because I think uh, doctors don't like to sleep in the same house as patients <laughs> because otherwise they have uh, 24 hours service and they would like sometimes to relax. I can understand it quite well. And then you can see uh, the uh, other houses like uh, Villa for Dr. Klimesh in Opava. Interesting is that the son of Dr. Klimesh Ivo Klimes uh, studied an architecture with Bohuslav Fuchs and became quite famous Czech architect who built a theater in Most in northern Bohemia and he uh, reconstructed quite well theaters in Ostrava and uh, in Opava. And this is a lucky, luck, lucky moment of my father when he met my mama. Uh, this is just uh, before they married, it was 1936, the time when my father got a commission to build a villa in Olomouc. And this villa was the start of his uh, moving from Ostrava to Olomouc, where he spent uh, most, uh, most part of his life since 1936 to his death in early 80s. Quite beautiful plan with a diagonal uh, view through all uh, living rooms and with, again with the conservatory in the south uh, uh, facade. The garden view and interiors unfortunately demolished, only the facade remained uh, because of the new owner uh, from 60s. So this was villa for factory owner Nakladal. At, at the same time, my father got second commission to build a, a townhouse with three flats not far from this villa. And uh, in this flat, we spent uh, our life. My father rented this flat where originally was a studio where my father made his drawings. But uh, after the war, I was born with my twin sister, so in this flat have been then four children, so it was too much. So my ma expelled my father and he rented 
studio in the uh, house vis-a-vis. Uh, uh, -vis. uh, it was quite a nice uh, apartment. The studio was uh, changed uh, for children room and we could use it for uh, Pilganozna, for instance, and uh, for some running uh, like Emil Zatopek around terrace, uh, uh, this uh, corridor and uh, the living room. It was really beautiful apartment. Uh, as a wedding present, uh, my father let to make portrait of my mama by a famous painter of Brno. This was a lovely idea. My brother has this painting uh, uh, now. And uh, so looked our living room and uh, uh, the hall was uh, decorated by little painting which my father did in Wroclaw as a student of the uh, academy. Uh, again, the living room and my father played daily piano, but he was not able to play on piano, uh, which would be designed by other architects, so he designed his own piano. So this is the design which was produced in 1940. This is our piano and my mama portrait. And here is this uh, sketch from uh, Wroclaw Academy time. My brother, uh, interesting was that we had also on walls uh, uh, photographs from New York. It was uh, usually also in the time as my classmates had, uh, had in their living rooms uh, portraits of Joseph Stalin. So it was quite a big difference of atmosphere in, in these uh, apartments. Uh, the dining area. And my father designed also three bedlamps uh, for Christmas. Uh, when my brother was born, he did this, uh, uh, this uh, mm, Bethlehem, and he dressed uh, St. Joseph in a fashionable dress of 30s. Uh, uh, also, uh, I think uh, one of kings is my uncle, obviously. So this was the first of Bethlehems, and then he did Bethlehems for kids of my twin sister and also uh, for uh, my kids. Uh, one of these wooden uh, uh, houses was very lovely uh, for a lady in Rozhnov. Uh, they have been then connected uh, whole life in a friendship. Uh, they, they lost the factory, but they could keep the house. And when my father did some renovations or extensions, he was not paid, but we, uh, my family could spend their summertime, maybe three weeks, and it was the honorarium for architect. It was a very cultivated lady who had a portrait of famous Czech painter Max Schwabinski. This form of, uh, of the roof, or of the ceiling in the living room was impressed also by Sharon. Here is my father sitting in a house in Falkensee, designed by Sharon during his last visit in Berlin before the war in the year 1936. And then he built also a regional governmental office and financial office in Mistek with a beautiful staircase hall. And some projects collapsed, like uh, apartments for engineers of steelworks in Trinets because of Munich agreement, and the same happened with the villa for salesmen of Škoda cars in Olomouc. But he built few villas more, like house for art collectioner Mr. Mischauer in Olomouc, a romantical villa, which looks a little bit crazy, but which had a very beautiful interior, as you see on the right part of the screen and the famous Czech uh, painter František Tichy from Prague made a portrait of the owner and was very often guest of this beautiful, romantical house. The owner was also uh, chief of a scouting movement in Olomouc. Then he built a villa in Luhačovice 
first sketches have been uh, in free uh, plan, but finally the villa was built in rectangular order on the slope of the uh, Luhačovice bath in Morevia interior. And then one of the last villas before the war was villa for factory director Alstern in Friedland in Beskiden, obviously impressed by Maison Sextant by Le Corbusier, which was published in L'Architecture d'Aujourd'hui together with the Sharon's uh, Villa Matern that they, uh, my father and my uncle has, have known this project of Corbusier, the interior and plans. And then some sketches uh, during the war for wooden houses which haven't been built and uh, uh, town villa with uh, five apartments for Prague. But this villa was built in the city of Pserov in the center of Moravia. It was the last uh, villa because this client after the war totally disappeared because of the political change in Czechoslovakia. But I think you do, do know such stories in Poland too. The, uh, I think the situation of Poland because of the territory change was even drastically more difficult. Uh, during the war, Czech Werkbund was still active, so my father and uncle have taken part in uh, exhibitions uh, um, of... Can you, hold, can you hold the microphone here? here? Don't, ah. don't cover the... Okay, sorry. Uh, so this was exposition in Prague of uh, prominent uh, interiors and villas, 1941, so it was one of the last expositions. And then I will switch now to some cultural buildings. This was a, a competition for the German theater in Brno, 1935. Uh, then uh, they could uh, execute uh, a very beautiful cinema in Ostrava, where uh, these strips had a very interesting combination of colors from dark blue to yellow and orange, so it was quite interesting at the beginning. It doesn't exist, unfortunately, anymore. And they won competition for the concert hall in Ostrava. Uh, it was pity that this collapsed uh, because of the beginning of the war. Uh, you can see the plan. Uh, downstairs was a big vestibule and then staircase up and there have been two halls, the concert hall and small experimental theater which could be possible to connect for big social events of the, of the city. So unfortunately it collapsed. It was, I think, similar typological concept uh, like uh, Royal Festival Hall after the war in in London in smaller scale. So these are faces uh, of my father and uncle during the war. My uncle then worked for industry, was employed, and my father, he stayed as a freelance architect through all this difficult time. He could uh, uh, um, reconstruct the former uh, gym for Czech theater when Germans have uh, occupied Czech theater in Olomouc. It was uh, finished 1942. Uh, unfortunately, this theater has burned in 1953, so I have only very, very small memory as a small child uh, uh, when I attended uh, performance uh, in this uh, theater. During the war, uh, the most important commission for him was planning of the industrial city in Hulin, in Moravia, for one factory owner, for whom he also uh, designed a theater. And the whole city and the whole project was finished uh, in April 1945, but then the factory was nationalized and nothing was built. It was also quite pity. And then uh, the last thing uh, prepared during the war was a 
project for the department store ASO in Olomouc for Josef Ander, but also this project collapsed because of political circumstances. Josef Ander was then jailed 11 years in communist uh, prison, and also his wife. Uh, during the war, because of this interest in theater, he also designed stage design like this one, um, Happy Age, 1945, um, uh, just after the war. And the last one, I think of 10 or uh, 12 uh, stage designs, was uh, for Polish uh, writer Julian Tuwim for Widow Clara, 1949. And after the war, followed some other projects of theaters, like uh, especially in Kromnerzysz, because uh, my father fought it uh, six years to come through, uh, but because of socialist realism, it was stopped and uh, in the last moment uh, was uh, impossible to continue and to, to execute this uh, promising project. Uh, 1948. Uh, he won competition for theater in Martin in Slovakia. And then Slovak uh, theater directors have given him some uh, projects of reconstruction of Slovak theaters in Martin and uh, in Nitra. So with these projects, my father survived then the difficult time of early 50s. He started also to teach at the Olomouc University, but he was already 1949 uh, kicked out because of political reason. He designed uh, chairs uh, from steel tubes for vice chancellor and deans of the new founded uh, Palatsky University, which are used until now in, in Olomouc. And then uh, at the same time, he was uh, elected member of New York Society of Architects, which was a New York chapter of AIA. Quite uh, interesting uh, um, uh, honor. Uh, interesting is that uh, when Germans have not been allowed to take part in the uh, uh, Siam Congress in Bridgewater in England, Sharon and uh, some others, like uh, Rudolf Schwarz, tried to organize Congress one year later in Freiburg and in Stuttgart. Here is a list of uh, participants. And as you see, from Poland should be invited Circus. And from uh, Czechoslovakia, Taige, Schlapeta, Kalivoda, and Kreisar. But uh, because of troubles with uh, permissions and currency, 1948, uh, the, idea, uh, the idea collapsed. So this was our family which was happy, but as my elder brother just now written in his memoirs, uh, that twins have not been born in a good time. So it was already after, after coup d'etat of uh, uh, communists. So the time was uh, even more difficult. One example for it was a Hotel Imperial in Ostrava. This is a original functionalist plan it should be built in two stages. Uh, it has been built only, only the first stage. But because uh, my uncle had to join to Stavo project, to state office with the project, he was, uh, he was uh, pushed to change project, but he has not done it. So finally, the director of Stavo project has clayed on the facade such columns which are not carrying functions. It's absolutely absurd, and it uh, destroyed the whole idea of, uh, of this project. And uh, my father and uncle have been proclaimed as a fifth colony, which is disturbing uh, our fantastic communist future. Uh, and uh, at the same time, Sharon's Villa Schminke in Lebau in, in Saxony uh, was published twice as a worst possible example of capitalist luxury in architectural journal and also in political cultural magazine uh, Tvorba. So it was the real end of modern architecture in Czechoslovakia 
for a long time. My father tried to survive as a private architect, which was not easy. Here is uh, uh, our uncle visiting us with his uh, uh, wife uh, in the year, I think, 1953. And then my father could do only small things like uh, to help to, to design a memorial for, for victims of Nazism uh, nearby of uh, Olomouc for sculptor uh, Jara Scholz, who was a pupil of uh, Osip Zatkin in Paris. And they won also competition for the interior of Olomouc rail station, where Jara Scholz designed uh, reliefs and my father offered this, uh, uh, this space, which was then executed to 1960. And then he uh, designed also cinema. Uh, uh, it was the first cinema, cinemascope uh, uh, cinema with a broad, uh, uh, broad stage uh, in Krnov on the border to Poland and reconstructed also a restaurant in Przerov, uh, 1961. And luckily, in 1963, uh, uh, Richard Neutra came to Czechoslovakia and visited us at home. And a few months later, through a special trick, uh, not as an architect, but as a, a music expert, uh, got a permission to travel to Western Germany and visited his teacher, Hans Scharoun. Uh, this is their meeting, first time after 27 years. And Scharoun fighted 10 years to get my father to West Berlin. And finally, he succeeded. And then my father worked four years since 66 to 69 in West Berlin. And he was a main draftsman, for instance, for the theater in Wolfsburg and he also cooperated on the German embassy in Brasilia. Sharon's papagai was a very, very good friend of my father. Finally, he also uh, learned to speak Czech, so it was quite funny when in Berlin uh, was the papagai speaking Czech. And he, he had been, uh, I am with Sharon and my father in, uh, I think it is March uh, 1967, when I had a, a pleasure to, to visit my father there as a, as a student. So here is another picture from this visit, photographed uh, by my brother. And uh, this is the result of the theater, which is uh, now reconstructed, so again in a good shape in the city of Wolfsburg. From Berlin, my father attended a competition for a little a little uh, Catholic church in the Moravian village, and he won this competition. And uh, then, even after Soviet invasion, he succeeded to build this church till 1976. I was at the inauguration of the church, and it was very moving because there had been, I think, 5,000 people. Because in communist Czechoslovakia, had been built only three churches. So it was really exception. And one day, uh, I think in the year 1978, in summer, my father met one young priest in Olomouc who asked him where he can, can find Kapusin Monastery. This man was Jerzy Popielusko, and they had a um, long correspondence. Here is one uh, Christmas wishes by Jerzy Popielusko to my father. He was very impressed by him, and then my father died, and shortly after that I heard about a tragic story here uh, in, uh, in uh, uh, Poland. So when I am in, uh, in Warsaw, I am always visiting Stanislav Kostka Church in Jolibosz to think on this great uh, Polish uh, citizen and, and priest. So my fa father worked like this, and because of this church, in the last 10 years of his life, he uh, designed uh, 60 new menzas in, in ch Moravian churches. Because he was unable to work in state offices, so he preferred to do small things for the uh, Catholic church. Uh, then we published uh, together in Bauwell the whole number 
dedicated to Wroclaw housing estate. It was a great success for me because it never happened that Bauer dedicated the whole number to, to one topic and it happened in September 1979. Here is uh, redactor Ginter Kine visiting us uh, in Olomouc. And my father enjoyed uh, that my twin sister, uh, she's uh, on the right in the picture, married one Frenchman, so he, uh, he traveled every year to, to France. It was never allowed him to come with my mama, so they had to travel always separately, but once he could come with my second sister, so they are just on Eiffel Tower observing uh, Paris. And in France he did a lot of, uh, of paintings uh, uh, on the seaside, uh, so he came back to his uh, beginnings when he made uh, pictures. And the family grown up, so here is uh, our family with uh, uh, our dog and with uh, children of my sister. Uh, last, my, my last daughter was not yet born, but she was uh, two days ago still in Krakow. <laughs> So it was uh, again the picture from our living room, I think 1981, I think that just uh, Teresa is somewhere here, uh, but not yet born. And uh, uh, for my children he also uh, designed one Bethlehem, this time with these twins, <laughs> admiring uh, San Joseph and Maria. Uh, and my son with many animals. He didn't know that my son will study veterinary medicine. So it was like a prophet, uh, prophetical um, expression. And this is the end of story. My father at his table. Uh, my uncle emigrated 1968 to Western Germany, worked uh, uh, in Stuttgart and later in the office of Heinlein Fischer. Uh, for Olympic uh, Village in Munich. And this is uh, really the last sketch of my father just before uh, he, he died. So I am slowly at the end of the story. Uh, when my father died, the leading uh, art critic from Prague, Indrich Kalupetsky, has written a very beautiful letter to my mama that uh, my father was one of the most gentle people who he ever met and one of the most sensible architects and he is very happy that he could help him once. He helped uh, to get permission for my father in the 60s to, to go and to work in West Berlin. So the whole story is now closed here. You can see first contact of our family with Krakow. Uh, coincidentally, my grandfather served in the Royal Cavalry, so he, uh, he served in the Royal Cavalry building, which belongs now to Wydzial uh, Architektury Politechniki Krakowskiej. And you can see here five generations of Schlapetas, my grandfather. Uh, my father is not here, but you have seen a lot of pictures of him. Uh, me. Uh, my, uh, my daughter, we have been missing her on this common picture and her three, three kids. So the story is at the end. I thank you very much for your pazienza. I wish you a very nice weekend. And I can repeat again, ja se czuję bardzo dobrze w Krakowie jako, jako doma. Dziękuję bardzo.